If you're a longtime MMA fan, the name Quentin Rampage Jackson must instantly trigger memories of jaw dropping knockouts. Counter knee from Joey Bell. Oh, right hand, and that is it! Epic trash talk, and a personality that was as volatile as it was entertaining. Hey, Rashad, last fight. <laughs> For years, Rampage was one of the UFC's most explosive and charismatic fighters. And he's out! There's the stoppage on the big right hand from Both inside and outside of the cage. But with great charisma, often comes controversy. And Rampage was no stranger to controversy. From inappropriate behavior during interviews to wild legal trouble and some seriously questionable comments, Rampage Jackson's career was a whirlwind of excitement and chaos. Return Rampage Jackson! Rampage Jackson! How good does that sound? Man, that sounds good as hell. So today, we're asking the tough question. Was Rampage Jackson just too wild, too unpredictable, too downright crazy for the UFC to handle? Or did his unpredictability make him the superstar he became? To really understand Rampage Jackson, you need to go back to where it all started, Memphis, Tennessee. Rampage, born Quentin Ramon Jackson in 1978, grew up in a tough environment. Life wasn't easy for him, and he was surrounded by violence and hardship from an early age. But instead of letting that break him, it gave him an edge a kind of street toughness that later became part of his identity in the world of fighting. Young Rampage quickly developed a reputation as a street fighter, but it wasn't until high school that he found a more structured outlet for all of that aggression, wrestling. And boy, did he excel. Wrestling gave him discipline, focus, and a competitive drive that would follow him into his MMA career. It was on the wrestling mats that Rampage found his first taste of combat sports. Wrestling gave him that foundation, but it wasn't enough. Rampage wasn't the type of guy to stay inside the line. He wanted more action, more chaos, more violence. That hunger led him to the world of mixed martial arts. But not in the UFC, at least not at first. Before Rampage was slamming opponents in front of UFC crowds, he made a huge name for himself in Japan with Pride Fighting Championship, one of the biggest and wildest MMA promotions of the early 2000s. If you weren't watching Pride back then, you missed some of the craziest fights in MMA history. Rampage fit right in. Japan loved his ferocious fighting style, but they also loved his larger-than-life personality. And with Rampage, you knew you were getting both. Pride is where Rampage truly became a star. He was known for those devastating slams. And the most famous one of all? The one against Ricardo Arona. That knockout would still send chills down your spine. In Pride, Rampage was a wrecking ball, combining raw power with a wrestling technique. A fighter who could end your night in an instant if you weren't careful. But it wasn't just his fighting that made Rampage stand out. It was his personality, the chain around his neck, the trademark wolf howl, and his wild interviews that kept fans talking. Rampage had star power written all over him, and the UFC could not ignore that for long. In 2007, after establishing himself as a top contender in Japan, Rampage made the move to the UFC. Fans were excited to see how he would fare in a promotion where some of the best fighters in the world were competing at the time. And Rampage didn't disappoint. His debut at UFC 67 against Marvin Eastman was already a highly anticipated matchup. Rampage had a personal score to settle with Eastman, who had defeated him years earlier. But this time, Rampage was in the best shape of his career and came to prove a point. Rampage came in and did exactly what Rampage does. He knocked Eastman out cold. That win set the stage for his UFC rise, and it didn't take long before he was thrown into the title picture. In just his second fight with the UFC, Rampage faced none other than Chuck the Iceman Liddell, one of the biggest stars in UFC history for the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship. And once again, Rampage delivered in devastating fashion. 
Rampage's knockout of Chuck Liddell was a shocker. The Iceman was at the top of his game, but Rampage came in and put him down. With that victory, Rampage Jackson became the UFC light heavyweight champion and one of the promotion's biggest stars. His ferocity, combined with his entertaining personality, had the fans hooked. But with fame came more scrutiny, and it didn't take long before Rampage's wild side started to overshadow his fighting. In the UFC, Rampage wasn't just known for his knockouts, he was known for his charisma. He was one of those fighters who could sell a fight simply by talking. Whether it was in pre-fight interviews, post-fight celebrations, or during weigh-ins, Rampage always knew how to keep fans on the edge of their seats. Rampage wasn't just a fighter, he was a showman. Whether it was the howling wolf persona, the massive chain around his neck, or his intense stare downs, he made sure everyone was paying attention. And let's be real, MMA fans love a fighter with personality. Rampage gave the UFC an edge, someone who wasn't just there to fight, but to entertain. But there's a fine line between being entertaining and going too far. And Rampage wasn't afraid to cross it. Rampage was the king of trash talk. He had that quick wit, and he knew how to use humor to get under his opponent's skin. Sometimes his jokes were clever and funny, but other times they made people uncomfortable. And that's where the controversy starts. It is one thing to hype up a fight with some trash talk, but Rampage had a habit of pushing things further than he should have. He didn't just want to beat his opponent, he wanted to humiliate them. And with that attitude eventually started getting him in trouble. Not just with fighters, but with the media too. Let's talk about one of the most infamous moments of Rampage's career. The incident with reporter Heather Nichols in 2009. In a post-fight interview, Rampage was supposed to be answering questions. But instead, he decided to make a joke that quickly turned inappropriate. Rather than focusing on the questions, Rampage simulated sexual acts basically dry-humping Nichols during the interview. Needless to say, it was awkward and unprofessional. Here's the thing. Rampage was known for having a laugh and being a jokester. But this time, it wasn't funny. What was supposed to be a simple interview turned into a weird and uncomfortable moment for everyone involved. Nichols later talked about how she was caught off guard and didn't know how to respond. Rampage would eventually brush it off as just a joke but the MMA community wasn't laughing. This was one of the first signs that Rampage's wild sense of humor could sometimes cross the line. A couple of years later, Rampage was back at it again, this time with Karen Bryant, another well-known MMA reporter. During what was supposed to be a standard interview, Rampage once again got inappropriate, making suggestive comments and even trying freaky with Bryant. Rampage had a way of getting too comfortable with the people interviewing him, and his comments to Bryant didn't sit well with a lot of fans. Karen handled it like a pro, but it wasn't a good look for Rampage, especially in the eyes of the media. These incidents raised serious questions about Rampage's professionalism. As if the interviews weren't enough, Rampage also stirred the pot with some pretty offensive comments. On more than one occasion, he made remarks that were homophobic, which sparked outrage both inside and outside of the MMA community. Trash talk is one thing, but Rampage's comments about the LGBTQ plus community were something else. These weren't just throwaway jokes, they were offensive, and many fans were quick to call him out on it. Even in a sport known for tough talk, there are limits, and Rampage had crossed them more than once. As you can imagine, all of these incidents didn't sit well with the UFC. The promotion had always dealt with its fighters getting into trouble, but this was on another level. Rampage's attitude brought a lot of negative publicity to the sport, and it left the UFC scrambling to manage the situation. UFC President Dana White has always been the guy who smoothed things over when fighters got into trouble, but even he had enough. Understandably, all of this strained Rampage's relationship with the UFC. As time went on, Rampage started to voice his frustrations with the company more and more. He felt like he wasn't being paid enough and that the UFC wasn't treating him the way a star of his caliber should be treated. Rampage was never shy about speaking his mind. 
he made it clear in interviews that he wasn't happy with his UFC contract. He thought he deserved more money, more respect, and more freedom. And this wasn't just a behind-the-scenes issue. Rampage made his complaints public, calling out the UFC for how they treated their fighters. This led to a lot of back and forth between Rampage and the UFC. On one hand, Dana White would defend Rampage as one of the biggest stars in the sport, but on the other hand, Rampage was making it harder for the UFC to justify keeping him around. Eventually, things reached a breaking point. In 2013, Rampage left the UFC and signed a deal with Bellator MMA, one of the UFC's biggest competitors. For a while, it seemed like Rampage was done with the UFC for good. Rampage leaving the UFC was a huge deal. He had been one of the faces of the promotion for years, and now he was jumping ship to fight for a rival company. It was a bold move, and for Rampage, it seemed like the right decision at the time. He was tired of the UFC's restriction, tired of the drama, and he felt like he'd have more freedom and better pay over at Bellator. Now, before we dive into whether Rampage was really too much for the UFC to handle, let's take a step back and look at how his behavior compares to some of the other controversial fighters in UFC history. One of the first names that comes to mind when you think of controversy in the UFC is Conor McGregor. Now, if we're talking about wild behavior and outlandish statements, McGregor has definitely set the bar high. Remember the time that Conor McGregor threw a dolly through a bus window and injured multiple fighters? Yeah, that's the kind of headline that would destroy most fighters' careers. But not McGregor. In fact, the UFC seemed to embrace the chaos that he brought because it translated into big money and massive pay-per-view sales. With McGregor, the UFC was willing to let a lot slide because his controversies came with record-breaking financial rewards. But could Rampage say the same? Like Now you got Conor McGregor going out there saying, doing all this stuff, talking about money, all this stuff. I was doing all this stuff, and then I was told, like, oh, you can't, you got to stay away from this, you got to stay away from that. Then there's John Jones, another all-time great who has a long history of legal issues, including DUI arrests, drug test failures, and hit-and-run incidents. Yet through it all, the UFC has stood by Jones, giving him chance to redeem himself. John Jones's rap sheet is long and he has arguably put the UFC in more hot water than almost any other fighter. But the UFC has kept him around. And why? Because he's an incredible fighter and a massive draw. In other words, the UFC is willing to deal with a lot if it means keeping someone like Jones in the spotlight. So where does Rampage fit in with these other fighters? Like McGregor and Jones, Rampage brought excitement and unpredictability to the UFC. He was a fighter that fans paid to see. But while the UFC tolerated a lot from other fighters, Rampage's repeated controversies combined with his growing dissatisfaction with the company made him more of a headache than an asset. So now, let's answer the question that we have been asking since the start of this video. Was Rampage Jackson too crazy for the UFC to handle? If you look at the big picture, Rampage gave the UFC more than its fair share of problems. Between his legal issues, his inappropriate behavior toward reporters, and his constant disputes with the UFC over money and contracts, Rampage was a PR nightmare. Every time he did something controversial, the UFC had to scramble to contain the damage. The UFC prides itself on being a professional sports organization, and Rampage's behavior often made it difficult for them to maintain that image. Whether it was his run-ins with the law or his offensive comments, there were plenty of moments when the UFC had to ask themselves if Rampage was worth all the trouble. But on the flip side, you can argue that Rampage was exactly the kind of personality that the UFC needed. Yes, he was unpredictable, but that unpredictability made him a star. Fans didn't just tune in to see Rampage fight. They tuned in to see what crazy thing he would do next. And let's be honest, controversy sells in the fight game. Rampage was a draw. He sold tickets, he moved pay-per-views, and he got people talking. Sure, the UFC had to deal with some headaches along the way, but Rampage made them money. At the end of the day, that is what keeps fighters in the spotlight.